Hello, all you wise people who are determined to grow in wisdom and understanding of the things of God. Today, we're looking at another golden secret. This is the fifth in the series on our golden secrets of the Psalms. Uh, these are revelations into mystery, revealing how the nature of God in us operates through all the issues of life. God is speaking to me, revealing himself to me. At all times, he reveals himself to me in the good times and in the bad. I am the student, he is the master, and he will use any available means to speak to me, to guide me, to mentor me, to disciple me in the art of the spiritual life. Everything, even the actions and words of my enemies become the media through which God teaches me lessons and shapes my life. The secret he teaches through this psalm will enable me to have enough discernment to hear his voice amidst the constant chatter taking place in the world around me. We must make sure that our ears are open to hear him speaking to us. We must make sure that we are not distracted. The servant is always watchful and attentive to his master's voice, ready to obey. Well, Verses six and seven says this, they make a noise like a dog and go about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth, swords are in their lips. For who, say they, does hear? Hmm. There's much noise from snarling dogs in Psalm 59. Dogs barking at us. When you're confronted by aggressive dogs, it's not easy to discern God's voice, not easy to hear him amidst the noise of the world. It's one thing to be able to hear God speak when we've quieted our soul, but what about when there is mayhem about us and the dogs are baying for your blood? If David could hear God's voice, through the cry of Goliath yelling, give me a man. Then you can hear God's voice in any situation. If Paul could hear God's voice while he was on a ship that was about to be shipwrecked in, in a storm and he could still hear God's voice, then you can hear God's voice in any situation. The way that you Learn to listen to the voice of God in the noisy times when the world is around you, spinning around you, and there's so much hectic calamity going on, taking place, trials and troubles here, there, and everywhere. Trouble in the home, trouble in the street, trouble in the neighborhood. The way that you get to hear God's voice then is by training yourself now training yourself through worship to be able to discern the voice of God. So David developed his discernment through worship out there on the fields, watching the sheep, caring for the sheep, but worshiping God and learning to hear the voice of God. So we come to the place as we do that where we can hear God's voice and then you can raise a hallelujah in the presence of your enemies and you can sing in the midst of a storm. Verses nine and 10 says this, my strength is found when I wait upon you. You, O oh God, are my fortress, my loving God. God will go before me and he will empower me to rise above my enemies. Deep within your spirit, God is speaking. Deep within your spirit, you can hear his voice. The clamoring noise around you can't stop God from speaking, but it can cause you to live at a level where you can't hear his voice. 
yet he still speaks. What you need to do when God is speaking, but you can't hear him, is you've got to go deeper. When we worship, we go higher so that we can go deeper. And then we go deeper so we can go higher. We go higher so that we can go deeper. And we go deeper so that we can then go higher. So when it comes to God's word, to his word, God speaks to his own nature in me. He's always speaking within the depth of my spirit. And when we come to God's word, he speaks to his nature that is in me. Understand, there might be trouble all around, but he's speaking to his nature in me. Once his word comes, there's no possibility of his nature in me doubting his word. My natural mind may come up with a myriad of questions, but the Christ nature in me, the new creation, when I, the thing I received when I was born again, that intends always to obey the voice of God. It's the word of God that empowers the Christ nature in me to live out the will of God. And when Jesus says, come, I simply come. When he says, let go, I let go. When he says, trust, trust me in this matter, then I'm going to trust. Now, this work of obedience is the evidence that the nature of God is in me and that my spirit is correlating, correlating with the word of God, with the spirit of God, with the nature of God. So the promises of God are of no value to us until through obedience we come to understand the nature of God in us. All the promises of God in him are yes and in him are amen. So our yes must be, cut, must be born of obedience. When my obedience, when by obedience, sorry, when by obedience we ratify or make certain or make deliberate the promises of God, then that promise becomes ours. So I determine to obey God's voice when he speaks until that voice becomes, until that promise becomes truly mine. So the, the, the trouble comes, the trial comes, God is speaking in me, I take his word. I take a word like, through our God we shall do valiantly. And I believe that word, my spirit agrees with that word, it says yes and amen to that word, and then I obey that word by living my life accordingly. And then that promise becomes mine, and I become a man of God. You become a man of God, you become a woman of God through being obedient to the voice of God, speaking within you, resonating with the word of God that you're reading through the Psalms and through Matthew and Mark and Luke and through Corinthians, and you live out your life as a new creation here in this world that lives above the calamities even when you're surrounded by calamity. God bless you. We'll speak to you again tomorrow. Look forward to it. Bye-bye.